G'day everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Australian Property Investment Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Christie David, and I run a mortgage broking business called Atelier Wealth, where we help specialize in helping property investors start out and scale up their investment property portfolio. As part of being an ambitious property investor, one of the tools you want to have in your tool belt is really knowledge. And that comes down to knowing who to talk to, but also being able to pick their brain and go, give me your knowledge and uh, and selfishly take as much as you possibly can. And that's what we aim to do with our podcast is to get what I call best in breed. So whether that's buyers, agents, real estate agents, financial planners, accountants, anyone that's going to come on that journey with you, be able to get their knowledge out of their heads and into yours. And as part of today's episode, we're joined in this year by Tim McGoldrick from McGoldrick Real Estate Agents. Yes, McGoldrick Estate Agents. There we go. Uh, change your name. It and, has been. Uh, and we'll talk about uh, the freshness and the uh, the change in name that's come to yourself and your your business. But Tim, I just want to say thanks very much. Uh, no we've had the privilege of knowing each other for quite some time. Yeah, just a little. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and seeing your business grow, your success, uh, on a personal front, yes. family, and also on a professional front as well. And that's probably where I want to start with you. So yeah, no problem. Tell us about Tim McGoldrick's story. I know that personally, property runs in the blood. Yeah. I mean, your dad run. Yeah, it has. Uh, so a real estate agency business. For, for us, or for me personally, I've always been around the industry. So yeah. my family business originally was uh, Elders Real Estate in Bury, yeah. uh, and has been in operation currently for about 35 years. Unreal. Yeah, so, uh, so my- really stood the test of time in, in, a, in such a good type. It has, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and Bury was never always seen like that. So it was mm. a bit of a gamble. My, my old man was working sort of in the narrow market and thought, hey, I might open up in Bury and uh, and sort of went over there and did that and yeah, it wow. worked out really well. Yeah. Um, and for us, I, I got into the business probably 15, 16 years ago, yeah. um, sort of did 12 months after after high school and really wanted had always wanted to get into the business and, yeah. and sort of took that 12 months to get into a bit of retail, get used to talk to people and that sort of thing and, yeah. and sort of give me that next step into to dealing with people that are making pretty big financial commitments and decisions and things like that. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, from, from there, I um, got into Berry and went to Sydney for a while as well. Mm. So I was working in, uh, in Chatswood and then started working in around Alexandria, Green Square, that sort of market. Yeah. Did a lot of off the plan sales uh, for developments. One of the last ones uh, that I worked out there was a building called Apex, which is near the uh, the yeah. Audi uh, dealership. And um, and then decided to come back down to the south coast because it's too good and didn't like <laughs> Sydney anymore. So yeah, uh, it's a very similar story that we've yeah. got, which is Sydney. I mean, a Sydney <laughs> boy, but. Um, I guess once you want to spread your wings or maybe think about family or think about lifestyle yeah. as well, it's the South Coast calls and once it's it kind does. of got a script on you, yeah, there's no turning back, yeah. is there? Yeah, and it's hard coming from here and you probably don't appreciate it as much when you're, when you're younger, mm. but then coming back, you sort of see how good it actually is. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah I think we're, and we're super blessed. I mean, this whole country, I say what a privilege it is to live in this country, but mm. to be on the South Coast and to be where we are, it's definitely yeah. a, a privilege that we don't yeah. take for granted. Yeah, 100%. Yeah? And especially now you've got Young family. And, yeah, and they're enjoying the benefits of it. And, yeah. and um, yeah, but just having the access to the, the thing, somebody described it to me recently was the thing that I probably look at now is when you come to the South Coast, you can live the life that you want to live. If you want to have the farm, you can have a farm. If you want to be by the beach, you can be in a coastal property. Mm -hmm. If you want to be in a bigger environment, whether you're in Wollongong or you go to Kayama, it's a little bit busier. Or if you want the quaint little town, you're in Berry or any of the other little South Coast mm -hmm. uh, villages that are around there as well. So yeah, well said. yeah whatever you want, you can find. I think you just snatched it there with the V word, which is the village feel. Yes. And I think that's what that really attracts people. I say, look, in Sydney, you probably have Balmain or yes. Mosma, as, as vill and they call themselves villages yeah. there as well. Maybe Coogee has that little villagey feel, yeah. a bit more commercial now. But yeah, you look at the village feel, and I think that's what the draw card is. You it can't, has been. you can't create that. That's there naturally, and, and yeah. it's built over time. And anyone that comes through Berry, yes. It just, everyone gets out of their car, don't they? They do, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a destination and, and it has been for a while, but I think um, just recently, the amount of effort that, say, the um, the Chamber of Commerce and Tourism and things like that, the the spotlight's really been on Barry and the amount of tourists mm. we see there on a weekend, it's yeah. just phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. And that's really where I want to go. The heart of this episode is yeah. um, the, I'd call it maybe the tree change effect yes. uh, and heading down the south coast, which is such a corridor that's gone through rapid change, rapid mm. expansion, uh, a real shift, not only in, per, in price, but also people yes. uh, in terms of the demographics that are living there. Yeah. And then we've had a lot of investors that have looked 
down there as well mm. uh, with an eye on the south coast. So what I want to do is kind of put that south coast under a bit of a spotlight yeah. because you've got such a unique perspective kind of being yeah, able to operate sure. a fair bit down the south coast. So, um, yeah, the the idea behind your rebrand, if we can just touch on that for a second. Yeah, it's something um, that I've probably wanted to do for at least the last 10 years um, mm. and had just been sort of working on it. There's been a lot of um, different versions of what we were planning on doing, different names and that sort of thing. We just thought, you know what, let's just put our name on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and go for it. We've been around a long time um, mm. and the Goldricks have been associated with real estate on the South Coast for a really long time. So we thought that was the uh, the best natural path to take with it. Um, for us, that change happened probably about two months ago. It's been received yeah. really, really well yeah. in terms of um, just brand recognition was instant mm. and um, and just people within the community sort of knowing that they can work with us and who we are rather than sort of yeah, being hidden behind sort of a major brand and that yeah. sort of thing. Oh, excellent, that's so yeah. a huge vote of confidence, not only when the community accepts you, but also when you go, look, I can put my name to it. And yeah. it says a lot about, you know, this is a family business that yeah. stood the test of time and now you're putting your own family name to it yeah. and, and standing behind it. So congratulations. Yeah, thanks. Well Perfect. Um, looking at the, the South Coast market, and we're being fortunate to have a chat to a couple of agents that, yes. that service the South Coast, but you're, you, you're that, next, that next corridor further yes. south, right? Um, Pre-COVID yep. and then post-COVID. Take me through the shift. It's, it's been interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So pre, pre-COVID, pre <clears throat> market had been performing pretty well. Yeah. And um, obviously, we had some ups and downs probably over the last decade. Like two, for me, so that 2017 stood out as a, a pretty good time in the market. Yes. Nothing compared to what we've had in the last two years, but yeah. that was still a pretty strong market. It softened off a little bit. And then um, once COVID came around, like... I know a lot of people panicked, and mm. especially me as a business owner, like I got fairly concerned as to what was going to happen with everything. Yeah. Had no idea what was going to happen. Um, and then the phone started <clears> ringing, like, well, hang on. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. So we were in, we were in lockdown, and obviously yeah. everyone's trying to do the right thing. So we weren't going to the office, uh, working from home. Mm. But then the phone just didn't stop, and it was people. And obviously, we were allowed to show property at that point yeah. uh, for people who were just wanting to buy there wasn't any of the restrictions that we had later on uh in the second lockdown mm. um but yeah the amount of inspections that were happening and people were just making offers and i think it what came down to um with the with the work from home orders that came through that a lot of people sort of went well you know what i don't need to live where i work anymore yeah. and as long as i've got a good internet connection um what am i doing up here when i could be down on the south coast yeah yeah yeah, yeah excellent and the demographics that start mm. to shift, because you would have seen, I mean, these are real community changes now, they right? Are. There's people come in, not only does the median house price go up, but yes. certain new new neighbours then start yeah, to come yeah. into the area. So yeah. take me through, what, what, what did you yeah, see? Yeah, we, we saw a varied uh, demographic shift. So there was a lot of young people, probably in the earlier stages of this increase of the market. Yeah. When housing was... Um, at the time, we thought we were getting really good results, but in hindsight now, that was still super affordable. Mm. Um, so we were getting a lot of young families coming down that wanted to bring their kids up down on the south coast rather than being in Sydney. Yeah. Looking at the smaller acreages, whether or not they were sort of getting five acres. I had some people buying 100 acres, wow. um, but getting really good bang for their buck for, for what they were coming down for. Um, and then that probably progressed into probably the, the, I don't know, the 40s to 60s, whether or not they were retirees or pre-retirees sort of coming in with five-year plans. Yeah, right. and, um, and that obviously push the market even that little bit more people coming with a little bit more money behind them yeah um and you we've seen it in the results of median house prices and, and growth in the area of uh, yeah what the effect of that was yeah that's a huge owner occupied it is mar- uh, centric yeah. um conversation as well investors we investors. Seen investors start to move in i mean no. it's such a high price point yeah. the yields maybe yeah. aren't as strong so it wasn't it's not attractive at the moment yes but where I look at this market particularly is yeah. we have a lot of clients that are Airbnb investors, yes. yeah, for example, yeah. right? And we did get that. Yeah. Yeah. You look at I, I look at Lura as an example. We mm. look at the far south coast yes. you know, with the beaches, uh, Jervis Bay. We look at Berry, for mm. example. Um, Southern Highlands is another example where yeah. it's like these are holiday, you know, within 
going heading out that that corridor hmm. an hour and a half maybe two hours south of sydney yeah great for you know weekend yes great for airbnb yeah. so we're using and because you've got a property <coughs> management arm yeah we do business. so we've, we've got property management but we've also got holiday accommodation so we've okay. got a, a business called berry getaways yep uh so we look after currently it's sitting around 60 to 65 holiday homes wow. sort of immediately around berry yep um what what COVID did for that was phenomenal um after that first lockdown and everyone was allowed to start traveling again yeah. like we could people couldn't find gaps in the calendars to come down and stay um, it was midweeks it was weekends it was back to backs it was crazy yeah. um, it has calmed down since then but the weekend for us Berry is very much a weekend trade yeah. uh, and the South Coast is very much a weekend trade. Um, if anybody's out there and they, they want to have a look at sort of um, data on holiday accommodation and that sort of thing, there's a website called airdna.co um, okay. and so you can take subscriptions to that. It can give you ideas of seasonalities and, and wow. whatnot. So it's a really good resource and we use it a lot just to try and educate people as to, to how the market's performing. Great, thanks. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for, for us, the weekends, the 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 big bookers for us. We don't get a lot of midweek stuff. Mm. Um, but yeah, if people are looking for that sort of investment, it's still going really, really strong. Um, there are lots of people still not wanting to travel offshore mm. and um, and being the that we're super accessible to the Sydney marketplace. Yeah. Uh, it's only a two hour drive and it's only getting better with all the infrastructure changes that are happening at the moment. Yeah, okay. um, but it's just, yeah, everyone's coming down to see us. Perfect. Um, we've had clients that have gone down the airbnb route mm. done well done yeah got some exceptional results yeah but there's also been um i guess tips for new players yes that that they didn't expect whether that was you know there's more foot traffic coming through so the the wear, wear and tear, tear on a property yeah. for example um <clears throat> having a team you know like the something goes wrong with tax yes. yeah or yeah they need a handyman the, the, or, the cost of running a, there we go. A, a property for us uh, i say to people when they're looking that you've got to expect that you're probably only looking at a take home at about 50 percent of whatever the booking fee is yeah right. by the time you take in um agents fees yeah so they vary anywhere from probably 16 to 20 percent i've heard some agents change charging 25 percent yeah um and then you've got your cost of your cleaners you've got maintenance you've got lawn mowing you've got damages that sort of stuff any good agent should be taking bonds and, and claiming on those bonds for any of those damages. So that should be sort of taken care of. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it does cause an increased wear and tear. Yeah. Um, for some people, going down the more traditional path of having a full-time tenant in there might be the better option for them sometimes. Right. But it depends on what lifestyle they want to have with the property. And and obviously with super requirements, they shouldn't be staying in the properties. But if yeah. you are paying for it yourself, then you get the benefit of being able to come and utilize the holiday mm -hmm. house. And this is again um, the holiday house conundrum is yes. when you want to go down for holidays is generally yeah. the peak periods as well. You so get in early, book out your calendar for plan ahead and, and yeah. try and take those good weekends for yourself. Yeah. yeah. Which I mean, you give up good revenue if you want to be yeah, in your it. own holiday yeah. house, yeah. But, um, but you bought your own holiday house yeah, for a yeah. reason. So again, just wrestling with that. And I think that was a really good article recently that I saw is potentially those areas if, if people are mortgaged up to the eyeballs, for example, which mm. I don't think a lot of those those households are but mm. the odd occasional holiday rental they're generally the ones that will maybe sell first so yes. they, you know, over the owner occupied so again the coastal you know, high highest yeah. points of far south coast may just start to come off the boil a little, a little bit, bit yeah. yeah yeah most of most of our owners that we have through our business we like you can identify some that you can tell okay this has to be a money making venture for them versus others that are a lot more relaxed about yeah who's coming uh, through right. and that sort of thing as yeah. well um for those guys they 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 I think they've generally been in a position where we're now talking say within the Berry region for these styles of properties that they're having, like it's pretty hard to buy even a house in town in Berry for sub $2 million at the yeah. moment. Um, and then once you start going out onto those lifestyle properties, we're talking probably three and a half mil up to six, $7 million. So I don't think it's gonna have too much of a bearing on those buyers, but if you're in a different marketplace, yeah, I could definitely see how that would yeah come mm. into effect. Perfect, and I mean, Berry, uh, looking at Berry as a particular mm. area, yeah. um, what has driven such a because it's held its value and it's gone up. It has, yeah. It's done really well. What is the strength of that property market, for example, say compared to you head further south and yeah. 10, 15 minutes down the road, you don't have such a yeah. high price point, right? Yeah. So I talk about people buy the suburb and yes. they want to live in that suburb. It's yeah. you have these marquee areas, you go to yeah. see there's marquee suburbs that people want to live in. Yeah. 
where five, 10 minutes, you know, 15 minutes down the road, you don't yeah. have such a high price point. Thank yeah. you through that. Yeah, so I think, uh, I think for Berry, um, it's probably been the gentrification of the, of the township, um, whereas it used to be a sleepy little sort of mm. go get a little weatherboard, farmers, that sort of thing. Yeah. Whereas now people are coming in, they're spending a lot of money on renovating, on improving the facilities that they have at their own homes. And then that also attracts uh, the businesses into the township as well that are mm. pushing to that next level, um, that are, are drawing the, the crowds in as well. And I think that that's just coupled with infrastructure improvement, like we spoke about um, outside of this, was the, the highway and things like that. So yeah. the ease of access into town and Berry being a destination versus some of the other little villages that are around. I just think that it just pushes a lot harder than what some of the others do and the people that are driving that as well. Yeah. yeah. You just again mentioned there about infrastructure. It's one, yeah. of the, one of the questions, big questions that I had for you because as an investor, yes. one of the big lead metrics on where a property may yes. start to appreciate or area may start to, to grow is government-backed infrastructure. Yes. So you talk about the Berry bypass. And yeah. I, I think when we had a chat, years ago was what's that going to mean for berry businesses because yeah. you could literally just bypass berry whereas you, before 100%. it used to be like a crawl and you, you had yeah, to almost, you had to go through you had to go through and it. I, but i think what it, I, t- I don't want to call it a trap but it almost feels like a trap now because people don't know what the town is doing you have that option to go around but yeah. people sort of are, on the approach go well let's just stop in and grab a coffee yeah and it's absolutely heaving but you've got no idea until you <laughs> it's too late you've already pulled in yeah. um and so it's yeah i think there's that part of it and just the um berry was a destination before the highway bypass and i think if you're a town that was struggling and then you had a bypass it'll probably kill off the town but i think that because Berry was always so popular, it's only just improved it. Mm. And we've had um, the the new play park put in as well. Oh, yeah. And the attraction of that place has been phenomenal, like yeah. um, the amount of people are there every weekend. Mm. And there's just there's just money being spent in the area. The bypass, obviously, we've had from um, from the Jeringong to Berry, that's been completed. Yeah. The next stage of that is Berry to, to Bomaderry. Yeah. Um, and that's going to be done at some point this year. I think they're waiting for a bit of warmer weather to finish off the uh, the road surface. Yeah. Um, and and then the other infrastructure you've got is 10, 15 minutes down the road. Um, the Woolies, Audi and places like that are starting to pop up. So yeah. we have got our little local IGA, which is great. Um, but if you do need to go for, for bigger services, that they're only just down the road as well. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, and then we talked about, you just mentioned about Jeringong yes. to, to, um, to Berry. Did infrastructure affect... Jaring Jaring Gong, Gong, yeah, a little bit. So at the um, at the time, in terms of commercial leases and things like that, I think some of the shops did do it pretty hard after yeah. the road opened up uh, because a lot of the traffic that used to, like as you came down the south coast, you could either choose to go to Berry or you'd choose to go through Jeringong and go along Bolong Road and come back into yeah. Nara. Um, and I think a lot of that shift of traffic ended up going to Berry and then mm. Jeringong sort of yeah, dried up a little bit. Yeah. But in terms of what COVID, I think COVID fixed that oh, for them. 100%. Um, and you look at people that wanted that South Coast Beach escape and Jeringong was just sitting there ready to go. Isn't so Quiet, yeah, 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 traffic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ticked all the boxes. Good, good buying and yeah. great outlooks and yeah. Yeah, perfect. Um, I love having real estate agents on yeah. um, because whether you're buying your own home or whether you're buying an investment property, you have to deal, unless you're you know, a yeah. buyer's agent yeah, you know, yeah. involved in that, you have to deal with the real estate agent. Yes. And Quite often, there's this misconception or a bit of a fallacy to go. Mm. The agent's the enemy, for example. Or yeah. I don't know how to. En- I don't know how to engage the agent, or how do I then enter a negotiation? Because yes. let's be frank here. You've been pre. I don't know if I do the numbers. Thousands of sales. Yeah. You are a seasoned negotiator. Yes. You know how to sniff out the good buyers from the bad buyers yeah. and the great buyers, for yeah. example. So your trained eye and ear is then going, okay, I know this person's legitimate yeah. or I know, <clears throat> yeah, we're going to come to a yeah. win. Yeah, if you know here. if they're going to go the, the whole way or... Yeah, or you yeah. know this person's not an active buyer, what I call maybe a passive yeah. buyer, for example, and they're, you know, yeah, they're just, just a They're in a research stage yeah, of, their, of their development. So. so I'm often asking the agents, so that people don't have to hear it from me, mm. um, how does a buyer put their best foot forward when dealing with a real estate agent? Yeah, for, for me... We, we obviously deal with quite a lot of buyers um, and obviously we've got a lot of different price points of what we have on offer because we go from houses in town to, mm. to the big lifestyle properties and large acreages. Um, so we do work with a varied group of buyers through the process. I always, my, my advice to a buyer is to always be um, communicating with the agent. 
because we deal with so many people, it is hard to always just make sure that you are servicing buyers as best as you can because yeah. there's just so many points of contact. Um, and as long as you're in the face of the agent all the time, it's very hard to get forgotten about if, if mm. that's the case. So let's put that, yeah, go back a step because yeah. you've got a suite of properties that you're, you're marketing or, yes. or selling. As a buyer, I've got my eye on maybe one or two properties. Yeah, yeah. And so that's all I've got. And I yes. think the agent should be like constantly yeah, talking to you. Yeah. Whereas you're saying, mate, flip it around. Yeah. The agent is, the agent's time. Be is, in their face. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with that. No. Whereas we think we're pestering the agent by yeah, being yeah. in front of them. No, no, I, I, I like it. And I like it when somebody is trying to be in my face because it's, it's very hard to forget that person. Mm. Whereas if somebody just rings me and says, oh, hey, here's my details. Like obviously I've got, I've got systems in place to try and service that person. Yeah. But if somebody's in my face a lot more than somebody who's just gone for one inquiry and oh, they'll remember me, it can, it can, um, it can change the result. Yeah. As much as you, most agents probably wouldn't want to admit that. Yeah. Um, but if somebody's in your face constantly and something comes up and you go, oh, I know Joe Blow was looking for that sort of style of place, they're going to be the first point of contact. Yeah. You, we're, we're there to put deals so, together. And that's exactly it. It's it's what I call the win-win-win. Yeah. So it's a win for the vendor because that's yes. ultimately who you yeah. work for and who you get paid by. But you're thinking about the buyer experience. Yes. So you want to win for them. So yeah. eventually you know, they think of you in yeah. the future as well. And a win for you as a team and as yes. a business going, hey, we've got a great result here yeah. as well and it's something to celebrate and yeah. share. Yeah, 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 100%. Yeah, nice. So negotiation-wise, let's yes. go there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep. So I want the secret sauce, for example, and go, how does someone make a successful offer? Because again, yes. that's one of the, it's fairly new to them. Yes. But again, you're you're dealing with successful offers day in, day out. Yeah. We just had a mention before yeah. that you've, you've sold a bucket load of properties kind of this yeah. week, right? So success just kind of breeds more success. Yeah. But, What's the way that I go about making a successful offer yes. that I know that, uh, that yeah. that's going to get your interest as yeah. well? I think um, being educated on the marketplace is is obviously hugely important for any buyer that's coming in. Um, <clears throat> when you're when you're dealing with an agent, and I've having just gone through this at the start of the year when we bought a new place, um, being very clear and concise on where pricing's at, mm. I, I think is super important for anything that we sell. We always give a price. Um, I don't like sort of, oh, it's around this or it's around that. It's This is the price. Yeah. And if you can get to that point with an agent, uh, I think you're going to have a lot more success because you just... Just to throw it out there a yeah. little bit. Because sometimes like you tell me... And I, and yeah, I, yeah. You've just mentioned that you bought the property. Yes. Uh, Bernard and I bought it last yeah. year. And it was a similar experience going oh, through it. Just going, it was a nightmare. And I feel like it's because it's so close to home for us. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we do this kind of... We're involved yeah. in this daily. It's like, oh, put ourselves last. Yeah. And... Uh, and that was one of the kind of pet peeves was, yeah. oh, you tell me a number. And yes. I'm like, well, I don't know, mate. You're the agent. Yeah. You tell me yeah, the number. Yeah. And my, my thing is like having been in the industry for so long and knowing that like you're having these discussions with your with your sellers, you're yeah. signing up agency agreements with them. Your agency agreement stipulates what your opinion is on the price. Your agency agreement stipulates what the owner wants for the house. For any agent that's sitting there going, oh, we don't know. <laughs> like you said, they go, well, you should know. You're the, you're the expert. Yeah. Um, and I get that they're, what they're trying to do is encourage that offer and, and try and build it from there. But I think having a, trying to get that clear and concise price point from an agent will, mm. will help you massively in, in being successful as to where you go with it. Yeah. Because um, if, you're, if you're 200 grand below where the expectations are, you're just never going to get there and you're wasting your time. Yeah. Yeah. It's and it's not being clinical because a lot of clients mm. may look at a, Call logic report or yeah, you know, oh, that, or I would take that sales. stuff with a grain of salt. Absolutely yeah. right. It's, a, it's maybe there to show recent sales, yeah. but where the market was six months ago, yes. where it was six weeks ago, to where it will be in six oh, it's, it's months' shif- time, it's shifting it's, weekly at the moment. Shifting, right? Yeah. So I'm like, you just can't rely on a static property report to give you that insight. Yes. That property that sold was superior for that reason. I think opening that discussion to yes. us with a real estate agent, <clears> like, <throat> we're we're looking at these these mm. recent sales. We feel it somewhat here in the ballpark. Yes. What are your, what's your vendor's expectations? Yeah. And, and again, even just talking, and we, we speak about this in our business, talk terms, don't talk yeah, dollars. Yeah, pa- package the deal together, talk yeah. about settlement dates, talk about inclusions and things like that. I'm, I'm currently working on one at the moment where 
what are we, 75 grand apart from, from doing a deal on it. Now we're starting to talk right on mowers, we're talking outdoor furniture, things like right. that to try and, and build that deal up to get the buyer from, from where they are to where we need them to be. Oh, beautiful. Uh, and this is from a, a seller who had been with another agent for quite some time, has recently come over to me and we've now um, got them more in realistic expectations of where they're going to be price point mm -hmm. as well. Um, so they are uh, repositioning their, their expectations on price and now we're, yeah, I'd say we'll do a deal on it today. So, oh, fantastic. Yeah. Congrats. But it's just, it's packaging. Like yeah. You've got to think of, it's not as clear cut as here's the price. Are we going to pay it? It's, well, what else can we do to, to bring the deal together? Mm. Yeah. Um, through the lens, uh, I mean, that's you as a real estate agent. Yes. And then through a buyer's agent. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you got that. that um, yeah. Yeah. South Coast that Buyers Agents. Yeah. Um, another business of mine. Um, so I actually prefer that side of the business than the, the selling part of it. I find the process of buying a lot more fun than the process of selling. Yeah. Okay. Because you are, and, and for anybody who wants to use a buyer's agent, huge, it's, it's I a, mean, huge advocates of yes. buyer's agents. Yeah. Partly because they can take the brief. You will buy 100%. what I say wholesale almost because yes. you're buying and you've got those relationships yep. versus I'm buying retail, which is I buy one off through one agent and exactly. that's very much the transaction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and for us or for me, the, the relationship you build with a buyer as a client, as a buyer's agent's client, it's just a fun process. Like mm. you, you, you're on the team and they're on your team and you're working towards a common goal. Yeah. Um, and you, you have availability of everything at your disposal. Like we can talk to numerous agents and, and obviously being in the industry and being known to always be there yeah. is that if somebody is employed at a buyer's agent to, to find them a home, they're a serious buyer. Because yeah. they're, they're paying for the service. Um, so if I ever have a buyer's agent come to me, I know, well, okay, yep, here's somebody who's ready to go because a buyer's agent wouldn't take them on if that wasn't the case. They've got to be pre-approved. Exactly. They've got to take a, you know, a, yeah. a, generally a, a commitment fee. Yeah, yeah. So there's skin in the game at the start. They're 100%. not really kind of just throwing an offer out there and, no. and going to disappear. No, that's yeah. it. Yeah, and the commitment fee, like the, the buyer's agent doesn't get paid until after exchange, but they are paying a small fee up front yeah. to get that buyer's agent working for them. Mm. Um, so if, if a buyer's agent comes to me looking for property, I know, okay, yeah, let's try and find this person a property because they're a genuine buyer that's ready to go. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Uh, very good. Perfect. Um, Investor-wise, yes. so through the buyer's agency mm. model as well, you probably have worked with investors as yeah, well. So what yeah. have you, what's kind of their brief, especially buying on the South Coast, for yeah, example, for sure. what, what's attracting them to the South Coast? Yeah. So for, for a lot of the investors that we, got, that we have coming through, um, it can be more long term than anything else. So yeah. obviously getting the, you know, getting the returns great, but they're also sort of thinking, well, if we set this up for the next five or 10 years, where where's this property going to be in that after that time, oh, is yeah. it something that we potentially might want to retire to? Yeah. Is it, um, yeah, what what is happening in the area that's going to push that price up? Where are other buyers coming from and what's that accessibility like as well? Because mm. the South Coast is a unique one because you've got two hours from Sydney, but in mm. some parts you've also got kind of two hours from Well, Canberra. you're only two and a half hours from Canberra. Yeah. So for us in Berry, we don't get a big... Canberra market, which yep. I find really, really surprising. Okay. Um, it's just that extra half hour for some reason just right. stops them coming as so much as in terms of buying in the area. They might come for a weekend and that sort of thing. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you don't see too many Canberra license plates. No, there, but, but you, you start go, going to Ulladulla, you exactly. start going to Batemans Bay, and yeah. you'll start to see all the Canberra uh, number plates around <laughs> there, all the, the hail damage cars for a while. Um, so that was pretty bad. But um, yeah, you head down, down to Batemans Bay, and I, I uh, recently transacted on one in uh, Surf Beach for some clients oh, through my lovely. buyer's agency down yep. there and they were looking for the holiday accommodation close to a beach sort of within that Batemans Bay area but they were even looking further south as well down to even Maruya um, and I sort of just yeah talked them through the process of what they should be looking for they've now put that on Airbnb they're getting plenty of bookings they're wow. using it themselves so they're yeah they're happy with how that's turned out yeah, exactly. there's another suburb that gets a lot of attention mm. Naruma yeah yeah and yeah. I've had quite a few like hallmark buyers yeah uh, Jerry Harvey, I believe, is bought down yeah, there. Yeah. There's a Maryvale venue down there as well. Yeah, there is, yeah. Uh, what's the yeah, attraction? Justin, Justin Hem's been buying up plenty of stuff down there. So, right. so um, mate, Quarter that... Deck and, yeah, I think there's a few other venues he's bought. So, mm. yeah. so I mean, that really puts it on the map going, well, Massive. it's like when Westfield moves into yeah. an area. Like, yeah. there's got to be something about this particular. Yeah, exactly. We went down there on a family holiday, second week of uh, the last school holidays for yeah. a week, and it's beautiful down there. What's it's... the attraction from, from that type well, of I perspective? It's... Yeah, I think the um, the... The, there's an improvement of what's on offer there. And I think that, like we talked about with Berry, where sort of that money is attracting more money. And so mm. things are improving. Uh, the accessibility is great down. The natural beauty of the area is, is fantastic. Uh, and I think that's just what it is. It's just 
people now, in terms of investment, might have looked at the Shoalhaven 12 months ago or 18 months ago and gone, oh, this is pretty affordable. All of a sudden, that median house price is jumping up. Yeah. And then so the, the search broadens that little bit further and you start pushing into Bateman's Bay and the Bateman's Bay market's still going really good down there. Um, like I talked to quite a few agents uh, through that marketplace because of the buyer's agency work that I yeah. do. And they're still, yeah, they're selling stuff prior to marketing. They're selling stuff at auction. It's it's still pushing really, really well mm. because they're not only picking up the, the traditional Canberra market that they had, but now Sydney buyers are starting to look into that area as well. Yeah, I guess from a Sydney, even a, like north of Wollongong area, yes. it becomes a very attractive from a price point and bang for buck, it does, doesn't yeah. it, as well? You're not, yeah. not really that far away from amenities no. you need to come back no, up. No, well, you've still got the airport at Maria and that yeah. sort of thing. If you do want to fly in or fly out, you can do that. Yeah. Um, but the beaches and the natural beauty of the area is yeah, phenomenal down yeah, there. Yeah, wonderful. Mm. Tim, I'll say thank you very much, man. Yeah, I really no appreciate it. I often say we, I get really selfish because I get to get all this knowledge and, <laughs> and to be able to pass it on to a lot of our listeners. Um, really fortunate to kind of have you come in and, and share that knowledge and insights with me. Really yeah, appreciate. too easy. Excellent. Thanks, mate. Wonderful. If you want to reach out to Tim and the Tim Goldrick, uh, we'll include his and their details as well. So if you're thinking, um, I want to explore the South Coast, for example, from a buyer's agent in, in investment perspective, or you're looking at particular areas such as Berry. Uh, Tim and his team have the knowledge, have the resources and the expertise as well. So highly, highly recommend uh, reaching out to Tim if you're keen. And if you found this episode helpful, uh, we'd love to leave us a review or reach out with any other thoughts or questions you've got that we'd love to answer uh, for you as well. So that's a wrap for another episode of the Australian Property Investment Podcast. I've been your host, Aaron Christie-David. Until next time, take care.